Okay, we are live. We're going live today in the Facebook group, Sales Revolution. We're also going live today. Um, we're going live today on YouTube, our YouTube channel. So Facebook group, we got about tw 22,000 of you in there now. You guys are just growing like leaps and bounds. So we're going live in the Facebook group today. We've got 22,000 of you in there. Uh, LinkedIn, we're going live on LinkedIn here as well. It looks like we've got about 8,000 people in there. We haven't really done much on LinkedIn, but that's starting to, to scale out. Looks like we're going live here in the Facebook business page. There's about 67,000 of you following me over there. My personal Facebook, hello, friends and family, and our YouTube channel. All right. I am traveling uh, this week, next week, and the week after. So I am at my lake house in Lake of the Ozarks, Missouri. Have any of you ever watched the Netflix show Ozark with Jason Bateman? Well, if you have, I have a lake home that I come to quite a bit in the summer here. I fly all the way from Scottsdale, Arizona, where offices are at, all the way to Lake Ozark, Missouri. And I'm here for about the next three weeks. I actually have an office space here at Lake of the Ozarks, if you can believe it. Uh, so anyways, we're going live. So I will be, when I go live this week, I am going live all this week with some different trainings for you guys. I'll be doing it from here. The internet's actually pretty good here. All right. Now, today we are going to go over a couple of objections that I know a lot of you get. How many of you on here ever get this objection? You know, Jane, can, can you give me like a better price? Like we, we had another quote um, from one of your competitors that was cheaper. Or can you give me a better price? We've had quotes that are cheaper, okay? Has anybody ever got that objection with what you sell? Or has any of you ever got this objection? This sounds really good, but I just, I want to compare prices uh, with another company. Or this sounds really good, but I just, I want to compare prices with another vendor we're looking at. Has anybody ever got that objection? Now, those two objections are both, uh, both happen in both B2C, business to consumer sales, and also business to business. I can pretty much guarantee you that. I sold in four different industries during my 17-year sales career before we started seventh level. Two were in B2B, uh, business to business sales. Two were in B2C, and I got that objection from any of those B2C or B2B. And the companies we train get that objection quite a bit, okay? So these are objections. It's not like the big objection, like I want to think it over or, you know, we, we don't have the money or the budget or I need to talk to my spouse or my other business partners. Those are different objections that you're going to hear a lot of. But over the next couple of weeks, I'm going to give you some different objections that you might not get every single call, but they do come up. And I'm assuming, and I can assure you that you're probably losing sales that are clients who know how to help them overcome these. They make those sales and they're in the same exact industry you're in, right? Okay. Now, if you're brand new to our Facebook group, Sales Revolution, all right, or if this is the first time you've seen me on LinkedIn or YouTube or a Facebook business page or even my personal Facebook, okay? My name is Jeremy Miner and the chairman and founder of seventh level we are a global sales training company that trains people exactly like you watching me right now so we train sales professionals like you we train sales executives like you sales management like you okay business owners coaches entrepreneurs and we help you and your teams transform the way you sell by learning specific skilled questions and techniques that actually work with human behavior what does it mean to work with human behavior rather than work against it. Do you know the difference in your sales results just knowing what that means? Okay. Now that's called neuroemotional persuasion questions. So when I say in EPQ, that's what that means. Okay. So we have to teach you the right tonality, the right delivery of those questions that put your prospects at ease, eliminate sales pressure because it disarms them. Okay. It, it, it causes them to let their guard down and triggers your prospects to actually want to engage with you and open up to you and gets them to pull you in. Who on here wants to learn how to do that? Okay. Now, if you want to learn those type of skills that our clients have, there is possibly, maybe a good reason why our company was ranked the fastest growing sales training company in the United States, not by us saying it, not by you saying it, but by results and how many clients we had last year in the Inc. 5000 list in Inc. Magazine. We ranked the fastest growing sales training company, okay, in the United States last year. There's a reason why, okay? Now, you wanna learn those type of skill sets. 
that our clients have. If you want to start making 10 grand a month in commissions, if you're a salesperson, you want to start making 15 or 20 grand a month every month, like consistently, or 30 grand a month, or 40 grand a month plus consistently. Or if you're a business owner who wants to scale their business and go from six figures to seven or seven figures to eight figures, we even train companies that have gone from eight figures to nine figures and nine figure companies and higher. If you want those type of skills for your sales teams, or if you are an individual salesperson who wants those skills, so you make a lot more money in the comment section, post hashtag NEPQ, post hashtag NEPQ, or better just message me. If you're in the Facebook group or on LinkedIn or the Facebook business page, or even my personal Facebook, you can just message me directly. And either myself or someone on our team is going to message you back some details, some different training options. If you're wanting those type of skills uh, to learn more. Okay. Nice. A live intro. There you go. All right. Now, if you're on the live right now, I want you to go to your phone and I want you to go to the comments section and I want you to post hashtag live. So go to your phone real quick. If you're on the live, go post hashtag live. And if you're on the replay, I want you to go post hashtag replay. So if you're on live right now, go post hashtag live. If you're on the replay, go post hashtag replay. Okay. Now, also, I want each of you to grab your phone because I'm not going to show you how to overcome these two objections without you doing this. Go to your phone and I want you to smash the heart button and smash the like button. So go to your phone, smash the heart button, smash the like button. I better see hundreds so we've got about, we've got 75 of you live all together in those four platforms, about 24, 24 of you in the Facebook group are live. So go smash the heart button, smash the like button several times. I better see hundreds of smashed hearts and hundreds of smashed lives. If I don't see hundreds of smashed hearts and hundreds of smashed lives, I'm not going to try and you guys how to overcome those two objections. Okay. All right. You know, I'm, I'm a sarcastic guy. Okay. Now let me help you with the first objection. So the first objection how many of you get this objection? Hey, um, can you can you just give me a better price or a better deal on this? We had another quote that was cheaper. How many of you have ever lost sales to that with what you sell? Okay. Now, I want to make sure you understand what this actually means. This could be an objection, depending on what you sell, either B2C or B2B, that you could get at the end of your presentation or proposal where they are negotiating with you on price. Now, the first thing you have to understand and you have to find out, is the prospect telling you the truth that they actually got a cheaper quote from somebody else or are they lying to you? I'm straight up telling you prospects lie to you because they're trying to negotiate you down and they want a better price. So we have to find out, is the prospect really being truthful, saying that they got a cheaper quote from somebody else? Or do they get a cheaper quote for something else that another company offers that competes with you, but it's not really the same thing. And you know, it's not the same thing. They just don't know themselves. So we have to find out, is it something that they're really coming to you or are they lying to you because they want to negotiate you down and they really didn't get a cheaper price somewhere else. Okay. So we have to understand the difference. Okay. This is very easy. Once you learn any PQ. Okay. Prospect, I'm going to role play with myself here. So the prospect says, hey, can you can you give us a better price on this? Now, the first words out of your mouth determine how they're going to respond. OK, so I'm going to act very calm. I don't want to be like, oh, you know, like getting all nervous and, and having anxiety, because if you do that, it's over no matter what you say or ask. So I'm simply going to say I'm going to say one of two clarifying questions to write this down. I'm going to say, how do you mean? So this is one clarifying question you can ask, and I'm going to give you a different one. Can you give us a better price on this? How do you mean by that? Or how do you mean? Or how do you mean? Or what do, what do you mean by a better price? Okay, that's a simple question to ask because I want to know what they mean. I don't know what that actually means. Okay, does that mean they're talking to a competitor? What does that mean? Or I can say it this way. Well, I'm not sure. I guess what's behind the question just so I have a better understanding. So I can say one or two clarifying questions. Hey, can you give us a better price on this? How do you mean by that? Or I can say, well, I'm not sure. I guess what's behind the question, just so I have a better understanding. Well, I'm not sure. I guess what's behind the question, just so I have a better understanding. Now, why would I want to ask that? Because I want to know if they actually met with somebody. I want to know if that company offered them the same deal for the exact same thing or a different deal for something else that's not going to solve the problem. But let me let me role play here. So the prospect says, well, 
so you say this, well, I'm, I'm not sure. I guess what's the, you want to lean in, even if you're on the phone or if you're in person or on Zoom. Well, I'm, I'm not sure. I guess what's, what's behind the question just so I understand. See my empathy, I lowered my voice. Okay. Now that builds trust. They're going to say, well, XYZ company gave us a quote that's cheaper than yours. Okay. Do I still know what that means? Not necessarily. So I'm going to ask this clarifying question. Oh, okay. Well, what quote did they give you? And for what was it for? Now, why would I want to ask that? Because I want to find out specifically what the quote was. And I want to know what it was for. Because maybe it's for something completely different that you know is not going to solve their problem. Okay. Does that make sense? And I want to find out if they really got a quote. Because if they're like, oh, I, I can't tell you that. Or they don't give you any information. That typically tells you that they didn't really get another quote. They're just trying to negotiate you down. OK. Oh, well, what quote did they give? What, what quote did they actually give you? And for what was the quote actually for? Oh, well, it was for this and it was this amount. OK, can you go, can you go over their proposal with me in, in a little bit more detail just so I have a, a, a better background? OK, can you go over their proposal with me in a little bit more detail? Can you walk? No, here's what. Can you walk me through their proposal just so I have a better understanding of that? Now, why would I want to ask that? Because that last question, sometimes, like I said, the prospect is making it up. And if they can't walk you through the proposal, if they don't know anything about it, you know they're making it up, okay? Or they can, when they walk you through the proposal, okay, they can talk about a quote for a service or problem that is far different than what you were offering. And you know that that quote is for something that's not going to actually solve their problem. Now, the prospect doesn't know that yet, but you know that, and that's important. Now you know they're telling you the truth, okay? And you have to step in and help the prospect, okay? So what you're going to do, okay, can you walk me through the proposal they gave you in a little bit more detail just so I have a better understanding of that? Well, they offered us this, and it's for this. Ah, okay. Well, Mandy, it really just depends on what kind of results you want. Is, is price the, the most important thing to you or actually solving the problem and getting them the results and getting the results that you want? So I'm going to repeat that. Let me show you. I, I want you to see what I just did there. This is very important. Okay, even if you're on the phone and they can't see you, but especially if you're in person or on Zoom and they can see you, it's very important that you do this, okay? You sit back and say, well, and so after you find out what was in the proposal and what it was for you, you just sit back and say, well, it, it really depends on what kind of results you want. Is, is price the most important thing to you or actually solving the problem and getting the results that you want? Notice price. Is price the most important thing to you or actually solving the problem and getting, them the, and getting the results that you want? Okay, did you see what I just did there? Okay, I'm, I have to get them out of thinking price-based thinking and into what? results-based thinking. Now that triggers doubt and uncertainty in their mind with the competitor's proposal that maybe that price is cheaper, but maybe it's not going to get in the result they want or solve the problems they want. I just triggered uncertainty with the competitor's price and proposal. Okay. That's exactly what I just did, especially with the analogy. I have to get them out of thinking price or cost-based thinking and into results-based thinking. Okay. Now, so let me go through that. Well, it just depends on what kind of results you actually want. I mean, is price the most important thing to you or actually solving the problem and getting them the results that you, and getting the results that you want? Well, the prospect comes back. Well, we, we, we have to get the results and solve the problem. But I mean, if we can get a better price, that's important, too. And then you're going to ask this. I understand. Um, can I you're going to lean in? Can I make a suggestion to you? Yeah, sure. That builds trust, empathy. Okay. What, what XYZ company quoted you for was A, B, and C, which is only going to solve XYZ problem, not D, F, and, and, and B. Now, we could give you the exact same quote for that as well, because it only solves this problem and that problem. But like I mentioned, it just depends on what type of result you actually want. So let me do that again. Well, what, yeah, sh can I, can I make a suggestion, John? 
Sure, go ahead, go ahead, Jeremy. Well, what they quoted you was X and Y and Z, which actually is only going to do A, B, and C. It's not going to be able to do D, F, and Y. Now, we could give you the same exact quote for that as well. But like I mentioned, it just depends on the results that you want. That triggers more uncertainty that the other quote or other proposal is not going to get them what they want. I just triggered more uncertainty in their mind with the other proposal quote. Now, let me give you a real life example in industry specific. Let's say that you sold windows in this example. Okay, you're an in-home improvement sales. We train tons of salespeople, tons of companies in this industry as well. We train all 158 industries in the world, but this is a big industry like home improvement sales. That could mean kitchen repair, it could mean a lot of different things. But let's say in this example, you sold windows, okay? And they got a quote from a competitor that's cheaper, say 20% cheaper, but you know it's a cheaper window and you know that it's going to have to be replaced in five to seven years. And you also know it's not going to cut down their utility bills. It's still going to have cold air coming in. Okay, you know that, but they don't know that. You can't tell them that. You have to ask them the question that allows them to tell themselves that. And you can say, now we can give you the, the exact same quote for that as well. But it, like I mentioned, it just depends on the result you're wanting to get. I mean, we can install like they have on their on their bid. We can install the same cheap XYZ brand windows that they quoted you. You would just end up having to replace them in probably five, seven, maybe eight years at the most once they start wearing down because they're cheaper quality and your utility bills are going to stay about the same that you mentioned to me. So your utility bills are, are going to stay the same. Now, we could also put in a mid-range window. It would last a, a bit longer, let's say 10, 12, 13 years. And that's probably going to cut your utilities down probably by around 15%. So, you you know, you'll save 80 bucks a month, something like that. Not a big deal. Or we could, like you originally had asked, we could completely solve the problem and put in the ABC windows. Those are going to last 20 to 25 years and cut your utility down, utility bill about 30 to 35%. So you're going to save about $170, $180 per month, which is $2,200 a year. So the, the question is like, which route is more expensive for you? Is it, is it more risky to get the extra funds that, that you had asked for that we quoted you to put in for the windows that are going to last the longest, increase the value of your home when you go to sell it and cut your utility down by utility bills down by about 30, 35%. So you save about 200 bucks a month, or is it more risky for you to put in the cheap windows like they quoted you, your utilities stay about the same. And that cold air, like you mentioned, keeps coming in at night in your daughter's room. And you end up having to replace them again in five, six, seven years down the road. Like, which is more expensive realistically? See what I just did there. That gets them out of thinking price-based into results-based thinking. Does that make sense to everybody? Okay, now that's one objection. Now, what about this one? How many of you lose sales? Great stuff, Jeremy. Let's do it. Blah, 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 blah. Hey, you guys are being nice today. There you go. Um, okay, so great stuff, Jeremy. Boom, asking questions to get them to see the value. Perfect, 100%. All right. All right, so let's go through this one. How many of you lose sales when the prospect says, ah, this sounds really good, but I, I just, I need to compare prices prices with some other companies first before I make decisions. Or, you know, I, I just, I want to compare prices with another vendor or, you know, I just, I need to take this back to the, the company we already use and see what they have to say. Or, you know, we've got some other people, other companies coming out to give us a quote. I, I need to look at them and compare prices first. How many of you lose sales every week because of that? Okay, it's not an objection you get every sale, but I know most of you get this objection with what you sell. Okay, so here again, this is really easy once you learn NEPQ. Once you learn NEPQ, like if you're going through our advanced NEPQ 3.0 portals and our group training with our trainers or in our advanced inner circle, these, these type of concerns you rarely get because we teach you how to basically prevent them from being triggered in the prospect's mind. Okay, just so you're aware. All right. Now, I'm going to show you how to resolve it in case it ever happens. Okay, so once again, we, we need to... to get the prospect disarmed. We have to help them lower their guard, okay? Instead of throwing out some type of rebuttal, which as you know, triggers more sales resistance, 
they give you more objections and then you hope and pray that you can overcome them and they, they're going to buy. You don't, you don't want to take the hopium drug, kids. It's, it's not a good drug. You stay off drugs, all right? You never want to hope and pray that something you're going to say or some type of rebuttal is going to magically work and trigger them to buy. You'll get some sales by that, but you're, you're, you're losing sales that our, that our clients are getting who sell exactly what you are because they don't throw out rebuttals. They get the prospect to overcome it themselves, which is more persuasive, okay? You telling them why they're wrong or then selves telling themselves why they're wrong? I think you know the answer. Okay, now, prospect says, hey, we've got another comp company coming in tomorrow and we just want to compare prices with that vendor as well. Hey, thanks. You know, we're going to get back to you here in about a week. We have another company coming in tomorrow and we just, we really need to compare prices with that vendor or company as well. You say this, yeah, that's not a problem. So help me understand, John, let's say that this other company that's coming in tomorrow also meets your criteria as far as solving X, Y, Z problem. And it even meets your, your criteria, including the price at that point, how would you then decide who to go with? Let me repeat that. Yeah, that's not a problem. Now, let's say this other company that's coming in tomorrow meets your criteria as well, can solve the same problem and even meets the criteria, including the price. How would you then decide who to go with? Or how would you then decide what to do? Then the prospect is going to say this. Well, at that point, it would come down to and then they're going to tell you their hot button. Then they're going to tell you what you need to understand to be able to pull them over the finish line with you. See what I just did there? I'm going to repeat that. Okay. Yeah, that's not a problem. Now, let's say that you meet with this other company tomorrow and they meet the, the, the same criteria that, that you were looking for and they can solve the same problem and, and they meet the, the criteria, including the price. How would you then decide who to go with? Well, at that point, it would come down to, and they're going to literally tell you your competitive advantage. They're going to tell you what they need. And that question helps you find out the key one or two things that you're going to need in your sales process to help the prospect move forward with your solution, especially if they tell you they're meeting with other competitors. I can almost guarantee you, oh, I can guarantee you, that the other salespeople competing for that account from your competition will not even know how to ask that question. It will never know the one or two things that this prospect will tell you that's going to push them over to your advantage. Does that make sense? I guarantee you, unless we are training your competitors, which could be a possibility, they're not gonna know how to ask that question, okay? So I hope that helped you today. Now I am going live tomorrow. Like I said, I am traveling. I'm traveling this week, next week, and the week after, I will not be back in our Scottsdale corporate office until June 10th or June 11th. So you're going to have to give me some time off. I am going to go live this week. I might go live a little bit next week. I'm at a family reunion down in Fayetteville, Arkansas, but I'm at my uh, lake house this week. And then the, the week after next week as well. So I have an office space here at the lake as well. Uh, but I will be going live tomorrow at 3 p.m. Eastern with one of our clients. So we go live every week with one of our two clients, one or two of our clients every single week, week after week after week. You can see all these interviews from, geez, I bet we'd interviewed at least a hundred some industries. We train, um, we train 158 industries at this point. You know how many industries there are in the world? According to Forbes, 158. And there are subcategories of each of those. Okay. We're training all of them. In fact, we're probably training some of your competitors right now that sell exactly what you are. Okay. So uh, I will go live tomorrow at 3 p.m. Eastern, noon Pacific for about 30 minutes. I'm going to break down the sales process of one of our clients who started, who's been in our advanced inner circle for about six months now. And when he got into that advanced inner circle training program with us, he was only making about three grand a month. Guess how much he makes now? About 20 grand a month, a little bit over 20 grand a month within six months. Within three months, he was already making 12 to 15 grand a month. So he 4 x his commissions in the first three months. And now if he's making 20 grand a month, he was making three. What is that? Like an 800% increase. And he's still learning. Like this guy in another six months will probably be averaging 30, 35,000 a month selling exactly what he's doing. So we're going to break down his entire sales process for you. Okay. He's going to give you some gold nuggets, some questions he's learned how to ask from our advanced inner circle training. 
that you can go apply to what you sell as well. So make sure you make sure you it's it's another live. We go live in our Facebook group. It's not on Zoom or anything like that. So if you've not joined our Facebook group, okay. So somebody's asking me, when is the job placement starting, Adrian? So Adrian, good question. We just hired a placement coordinator to build out our entire placement process. Okay. We did not want to do that on our own and just go out and wing it for you guys. Our brand is very, very important to me and Matt and Marco and, and the rest of our board of directors. Okay. So we wanted to make sure we had a the right placement coordinator to build out the internal processes before we launched the job placement program. Because like I said, we probably have at least 30 companies a week, probably more than that now, that come to us wanting to hire people who are certified in our advanced NEPQ uh, 2.0, especially our 3.0 advanced training in our inner circle training. Like they would, they want to hire them because they, they outsell everybody else three to one, four to one. Okay. And they're willing to pay for that, the placement. So as long as you're one of our clients, you're going to have uh, an opportunity because you have to be trained. They're not going to hire somebody that's not certified in our training because they know they're not going to sell as much as people who are certified in it. So those are in industries where with our training that we train you, plus the commissions, those are easily 250,000 plus a year commission jobs easily. A lot of people will make a lot more than that in about seven to eight different industries that we place you in. OK, so your question, when is that going to launch? It's not going to launch till August. OK, because we are building out the internal process for it. But when it launches, it's going to come heavy and hard. So be patient. We just need about 90 days because we're building it out. We just hired the right uh, placement coordinator to build all that out. And she's hiring the team to build that out to make sure we can match the employer with our clients and our inner circle and 3.0 programs into the right opportunity. And there's a lot of operational stuff that we have to build out for that. So that will be launched sometime in August and you will get an email about it. So you can be placed. Adrian, good job on being 3.0. OK, so I will we'll, that'll be announced. You'll, you'll start hearing more about it probably even in a month from now. OK, so that you're ready for that. And since you're an advanced 3.0, you're you will easily get hired by those companies for sure. OK, guys, we'll see you tomorrow. Make sure that you set your notifications on. Now, if you haven't joined the Facebook group yet, because I'm only I'm going live in the Facebook group tomorrow. Sales Revolution. Uh, we, we had a, uh, we're going to have somebody drop the link in LinkedIn here. So, or you can just go to um, salesrevolution.pro. So if you didn't see the link, if you're on uh, YouTube, go to salesrevolutioncz.pro. I just tagged in. So if you're on YouTube and we can't message you here, just go to salesrevolution.pro. Go to salesrevolution.pro. Join the free Facebook. We go live in the Facebook group about three, sometimes four times a week with different trainings, different Q&As like I just did. Um, we only go live on the other platforms maybe once a week. So if you're on LinkedIn, you want more training, make sure you join the Facebook group. Uh, you're welcome. Somebody's called me Uncle Jay. I like that. That's funny. So it's 2.0 certification, including a placement program. So in the 2.0 program, whoever asked me that, because I can't see the name. Okay, that's Cody Gray. So in the 2.0 program, Cody, we teach you how to land those jobs. We teach you how to interview. We teach you how to write the right resume for what they're looking. And that's more of a done with you type of program where we teach you the skills to be able to go out and get placed with any company that you want. In our advanced 3.0 and inner circle, those companies want to hire them first because they just have more skills than like a 2.0 member. Because the advanced 3.0 training program, I think in 2.0, we have, it's an 11 hour training program with really no group coaching. Um, in advanced 3.0, it's 28 hours. So it's almost three times the training. Plus it's like three to four group trainings a week. So those clients and students just get a much better result because they know everything and advanced inner circle is even more detailed than that. Okay. So those people will get placed. Um, that's more of a done for you type of thing where they get placed with the employer, but 2.0, we do teach you how to do it. We teach you how to write the re resumes. We give you templates, teach you what to say, all that kind of stuff, but you're going to have to go out and do that on your own. So try to get into 3.0 if you can, because you're just going to sell more of what you're already selling and you're going to get placed in a better company for sure. Okay. Jeremy Miner, you shared so much value today in every post. Thank you for teaching Heart Center Selling. You're welcome, Drew. That was very nice of you. Okay. I'll see you guys tomorrow at 3 p.m. Eastern when I break down that client sales process. See you tomorrow at 3 p.m. Eastern. Make sure you set your notifications on your phone that when I go live in the Facebook group, you will get notified. We have almost 22,000 people in the Facebook group now. That thing is growing like weeds, like crazy. 
So you have less than a 5% chance to get notified unless you have your notification set. See everybody tomorrow. Stay out of trouble.